Hello everyone, welcome back to the Mr. Flipwagon YouTube channel. I'm Mr. Flipwagon, but you can call me Mel. And today we are taking a look at the Pan European Tier 5 battleship, the Viribus Unitis. We are playing on the map New Dawn and we have the pleasure of being top tier. Viribus Unitis, or with United Forces, was the personal motto of the Austro Hungarian Emperor Franz Joseph I. Viribus Unitis was the first ship of the Tegethoff class battleships, originally ordered in 1908. She was intended to be named Tegethoff, but Franz Joseph wanted it to be renamed. Thus, the second ship in the class would bear the name Tegethoff, and this one would be named Viribus Unitis. She would be launched on the 24th of June 1911 and would be commissioned on the 15th of December 1912. In June 1914, the Viribus Unitis would carry the Archduke Franz Ferdinand of Austria to Bosnia via the mouth of the Neretva River, at which he would be transferred to another vessel. It was on this journey that Franz Ferdinand and his wife would be assassinated by Gavrilo Princip. Viribus Unitis would carry their bodies back to Trieste, where they originally departed from. And before they knew it, the First World War had begun. At the start of the war, August 1914, the German ships SMS Gerben and SMS Breslau called for Austro-Hungarian support to break out of Messina, where they had been refueling before the outbreak of the war. By the first week after the war's outbreak, British ships had already stationed outside Messina in an attempt to trap the two German ships. While Austria-Hungary had not mobilized this entire fleet, they still sent a force to assist the German ships, consisting of the Viribus Unitis, Tegethoff, Prinz Eugen and quite a lot of other ships. Wary of instigating war with Britain, the Austro-Hungarian High Command ordered the ships to try to avoid British ships and only to support the Germans while in Austro-Hungarian waters. Once the Germans broke out of Messina, the Austro-Hungarian ships made their way to Brindisi to link up with the Germans and escort them back to a port in Austria-Hungary. However, the German movement towards the Adriatic had been a diversion to throw off the British and French enemy ships. The Gerben and Breslau would instead make their way to the Ottoman Empire, where the ships would be sold. Instead of following the German ships, the Austro-Hungarian fleet withdrew back to the naval base in Poland. In May 1915, the Viribus Unitis would participate in the bombardment of Ancona, basically a mission where the Austro-Hungarian navy would basically just sail up to the Italian province of Ancona, bombing both military and civilian targets in a response to Italy's declaration of war against Austria-Hungary. The bombardment would leave Italy with one destroyer and airship damaged, 63 fatalities and severe damage to civilian infrastructure and military installations in Ancona, while Austria-Hungary basically got out without a scratch. But to be fair, if you look at how outmatched the Italians were, you can kind of understand that, yeah, the Italians didn't really stand a chance in this battle. Other than that, the Viribus Unitis would mostly stay in the naval base in Pola during the war. The Austro-Hungarian fleet couldn't really get out of the Adriatic Sea due to the Otranto Barrage, which was an allied blockade of the Otranto Strait between Brindisi and Corfu. In October 1918, Austro-Hungary realized that they were losing the war. Instead of handing off the ships to the Allies, they decided it would be preferred to hand them to the newly established, neutral, state of Slovenes, Croats and Serbs, rolls of the tongue, I know. On the 31st of October, Viribus Unitis would be transferred to the state of Slovenes, Croats and Serbs, and would be renamed Yugoslavia. On the next day though, the Italian men Raffaele Paolucci and Raffaele Rossetti rode a primitive manned torpedo into the Austro-Hungarian naval base at Pola. The men surprisingly successfully attached explosives to the Yugoslavia, but were discovered due to the fact that they had no breeding gear, so they had to keep their heads over water. Despite being discovered and captured, the two men would still successfully sink the Yugoslavia. In World of Warships you get to see the Viribus Unitis at Tier 5. You can also run her under either the Pan-European flag or the Austro-Hungarian naval ensign. 
The Virgibus Unitis also has a very very nice permanent camouflage that I'm not running in this battle, but you can see on the screen this permanent camo looks pretty damn good. Concerning consumables, the Viribus Unitis only has damage control party and damage repair party. Viribus Unitis's main strength lies in her 12 305mm guns. These guns, while low caliber, are, in my experience, relatively consistent and accurate with good penetration. Although I must stress that her armor penetration values decrease quite dramatically at longer ranges, so sometimes it feels like you're shattering shells that you're really supposed to be penetrating. And while the guns are relatively accurate, there definitely still are times where your shell dispersion will be a bit wonky. The turret traverse is acceptable. Definitely on the slower side, to the point where you want to be firing towards the side your guns are pointed at, instead of having to turn them all the time to um, each side whenever you feel like it. The concealment is quite nice with a 12.5 km detection base, um, and it, it's, it's quite nice, definitely could be a lot worse. The maneuverability on the Viribus Initis is... eh. Like, you can't expect too much of a World War I dreadnought. The speed is 20.5 knots base and has an alright turning circle, actually. Now, this is where the ship gets super interesting. Its anti-aircraft defense is literally almost non-existent. It only has four 7mm AA guns that dish out an average damage of 8 per second. 8. You won't be shooting anything down in with this thing, and I know people sometimes exaggerate a ship's anti-aircraft defenses, saying something like, oh my god, this, th this thing cannot shoot anything down, but no. Take my word for it, Viribus Unitis will literally almost never shoot anything down. Like, a plane can be flying above you for like... Two minutes maybe <laughs> and you w and they won't be taking a lot of losses like that's that's quite poor that's really quite poor and now for the most interesting and unique part of this uh, ship it's the survivability she has very good armor against AP especially bow armor but against HG it doesn't really stand a chance she does have a turtleback citadel uh, so you have to she does have a turtleback citadel, but you still need to be quite careful when showing broadside, which you basically have to do if you want to get all your guns to bear due to your uh, poor firing angles. And now for the most controversial part of this thing. It only has 35.7k health. Compare it to the tier 3 German battleship, the Nassau, it only has 35.4k health, and Unitis is two tiers higher than Nassau. Yikes. A big problem with such a low amount of health is that getting hit by anything feels like a massive loss of it, and oftentimes your repair parties are just not enough to repair that damage. You will often be in situations where you have like 3k health left on your ship and you can only heal back 3k more, which is practically useless. Despite the Viribus Unitis' downsides, I still feel like this thing is actually quite a nice little tier 5 ship. Yeah, it's not the best, it's not the most overpowered thing, but it's interesting and it's quite unique. Like, in tier 5 you don't see a lot of um, relatively accurate battleships, but th this thing is, and it's fun to have guns that can just hit targets. Something also I think you should be aware of, which I forgot to <laughs> tell about while discussing the statistics, is that this thing has very very little um, torpedo protection, which means that any torpedoes you're going to take, well first of all, there is no mitigation from your torpedo protection, um, you will be taking full damage, and secondly, you still have, you have, a, you have low health, you don't have a lot of health to play with, so just taking one torpedo from like a Mutsuki or a Minikaze can be like 
um, say bye bye to like half your health, literally. And thirdly, with the heals that you have, you can't really mitigate, you can't really heal back the damage that you have taken from a torpedo hit or from a citadel hit. And well, that means that you're just constantly on low health and you're um, in theory way 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 more squishy than what you would look like but but despite that I honestly quite like this ship yeah it's slow yeah it's cumbersome yeah the armor isn't really as strong as it looks like yeah the anti-aircraft armament doesn't exist it still feels like a nice challenge to play and uh, I, I, f I feel like I have, a, I have a bit of a similar relationship with this ship as I have with the Mysore. Is that, uh, yeah, these things are challenging to play. They're not the best ships, but they're interesting. And in that way, they're fun. They are a challenge to play. If you do well in them, that means that you are doing good as a player. It's not due to the ship. It's not the ship being good, it's you being good. And at least for me, knowing that, is quite a rewarding feeling. So, for people that do like a challenge and do like history, feel free to get this ship if you have some uh, doubloons flying around, if you have some, uh, if your wallet is itching a bit in your pocket, um, try this thing out. It's interesting. Um, if you don't like the idea of being on low health or helpless constantly, and if you prefer comfort ships that are in general more competitive, then this probably isn't for you. Anyway, that has been my review of the Veribus Unitis. What do you think about it? Have you played it? Would you want to play it? Do you agree or disagree with my thoughts about it? Leave your opinions in the comments below. Anyway, that has been it for this video. Socials are in the description and I remind you to stay awesome, keep flipping and I'll see you in the next video.